this lesson, you're going to expand your vocabulary with all the common C1 vocabulary that you need to sound fluent, sound professional, sound advanced. Welcome back to J4's English. Of course, I'm Jennifer. Now let's get started. First, let's review the most common C1 verbs. Now, I'm going to start this with a quiz to see how well you know this vocabulary. So you'll complete a quiz, you'll learn the vocabulary, and then you'll complete the quiz again so you can see how much you've improved from the beginning to the end. So you'll complete a lot of quizzes throughout this whole lesson. So let's start your first quiz. Question one, the organization better access to healthcare. Now, I'm only going to give you three seconds to answer, which is not a long time. So, of course, hit pause, take as much time as you need, and when you're ready to see the answer, hit play. Advocates for. Question two. The architect will the design concept during the presentation. Elaborate on. Question three. The company plans to a new recycling program to implement. Question four. As the fog lifted, the majestic mountain emerged. Question five. Healthy fats and proteins a balanced diet. Constitute. Question six. The graduation ceremony will at 10 a.m. sharp. Commence. Question seven. Yesterday, the art exhibit, a wide range of contemporary art encompassed. Question eight. The new furniture, the paint color. Compliments. Question nine. She used expressive body language to her excitement about the trip. Convey. And finally, question 10. Right now, the team in the conference room is assembling. So how'd you do with the quiz? Now remember, it doesn't matter what your score is because now you're going to learn all the concepts in detail and then you'll complete the quiz again and I promise your score will be a lot higher the second time. So let me explain each of these verbs in detail right now. To advocate, advocate. This means that you support, recommend, or speak in favor of something. For sentence structure, you advocate for something. You need that preposition for, and then you have your something, a noun, or a gerund verb because you have the preposition for. As an example, environmentalists advocate for stricter regulations to protect endangered species. If the environmentalists advocate for these stricter regulations, it means they want them, they recommend them, they support them, and they speak in favor of them. And notice that preposition for. Environmentalists advocate for stricter regulations. To elaborate, elaborate. This is when you add more detail or information to a statement or explanation. For sentence structure, you elaborate on something. And that something is your idea, your statement, your explanation. So notice that preposition. Here we need on. Advocate for, elaborate on. For example, the professor asked Mark 
to elaborate on his research findings during the presentation. So Mark is presenting, he's sharing information about his research findings. But the professor said, can you elaborate on this? So Mark needs to provide more information, more details. And by doing so, he's elaborating on his research findings. To implement, implement. This is when you put something into effect or action, or you apply or carry out a plan or decision. For example, the company plans to implement a new marketing strategy to increase sales. So they're going to implement this marketing strategy. They're going to put it into effect. Once it's in effect, it means it is active. It is doing what you wanted it to do. And notice here, you implement something. So we don't need an additional preposition between our verb and our noun or clause. Implement the marketing plan. Implement the strategy. Implement the recommendations. To emerge, emerge. This is when something comes into existence or becomes visible or apparent. For example, as the sun set, the city's skyline emerged in all its splendor. The city skyline emerged. It became visible or apparent. Apparent is another way of saying visible. If something is apparent, it means you can see it. A problem can also emerge, which means that problem is visible or apparent. To constitute, constitute. This means to be part of a whole or to form or make up something. For example, these five sections constitute the annual report. So these five sections make up the annual report. They form the annual report. They're a part of the annual report. So the sections are the individual parts and the whole is the annual report. And these five sections constitute, make up or form the annual report. To commence, commence. This simply means to begin or start something. Remember that all of these verbs are advanced C1 verbs. They are more advanced ways of saying simple things like start, commence. But also remember that to be considered fluent and advanced in English, you need to know these alternative ways and advanced grammatical structures. So commence is the advanced way of saying to start or begin. For example, the conference will commence with a keynote speech by a renowned expert in the field. Of course, you can simply say start, but to sound more advanced, you can say commence. To encompass, encompass. This means to include or contain or to cover or surround entirely. For example, the project scope encompasses a wide range of topics related to sustainable development. If it encompasses a wide range of topics related to sustainable development, it means that it includes or contains these topics. And the project scope, the scope of a project is what a project will include or cover. So if it is within the scope, the project will do it. If an item is outside of the scope, well then the project will not do it. You might need to commence, start a new project that encompasses that other item, that contains that other item. To complement, complement. This means to enhance or complete something by adding an additional item that harmonizes with it. In plain English, 
It means that you add something that goes well with it, that matches it. For example, the red shoes complemented her black dress perfectly. She has her black dress. Well, what color harmonizes with black? What color goes well with black? Red. Red and black complement each other. So she chose red shoes to complement her black dress. To convey. Convey. This means to communicate or express a message or information. For example, the artist used muted colors to convey a sense of tranquility in the painting. The artist used these colors to convey a certain emotion, to communicate that emotion, to express that emotion. Muted colors are very soft colors. Tranquility, that is a feeling of calm. So when you look at this painting, the feeling is conveyed. The feeling is communicated or expressed. To assemble, assemble. This means to gather or to put together parts to create a whole. For example, tomorrow let's assemble in the conference room to discuss the proposal. In this sense, it means to gather. So when individuals assemble, first they're individuals, but then the whole is the team. So you have the individual members, but then when they assemble, they combine to form the team. And it can also mean to gather. When people gather, they are individuals and they come together as a whole. Tomorrow, let's assemble in the conference room to discuss the proposal. Now that you're more comfortable with these advanced verbs, let's do that quiz again. Here are the questions. Hit pause, take as much time as you need, and when you're ready to see the answers, hit play. So how did you do with that quiz? Let's find out. Here are the answers. Hit pause, take as much time as you need to review these answers, and when you're done, hit play. Amazing job, now share your scores from the quizzes and let's move on and start with C1 adverbs. Question one, it's almost winter, so the cold weather is approaching. Now I'm only going to give you three seconds, which is not a lot of time, so hit pause, take as much time as you need, and when you're ready, hit play. Inevitably. Question two, she disagreed with the new policy. Vehemently. Question three, despite the small error, the customer complained about the mistake. Inordinately. Question four, the presentation was informative, but some sections felt detailed. Superfluously. Question five, he forgave his friend for the mistake and even offered to help fix it magnanimously. Question six, the rain fell throughout the night, making it difficult to sleep. Incessantly. Question seven, the carpenter swung his hammer precariously. Question eight, he was angry about being fired, but now he can start his art career. Ostensibly. Question nine, the family agreed to spend their vacation in Morocco. Unanimously. And finally, question 10, the old clock chimed every hour without fail. Perpetually. 
So how did you do with that quiz? Don't worry if you did terribly, you got zero out of 10, five out of 10. That's okay because now I'm going to explain each adverb in detail. Incessantly, incessantly. This means without interruption or continuously. For example, the alarm kept ringing incessantly until she finally woke up. Of course, I could say the alarm kept ringing until she finally woke up. Adverbs are not required in a sentence. But when I say incessantly, you have this picture in your mind of this action happening non-stop continuously. So all of a sudden, it sounds a lot more annoying or frustrating than without the adverb. The alarm kept ringing incessantly until she finally woke up. Inevitably, inevitably. That's fun to say, inevitably. This means certain to happen. So let's take an example with population growth. I could say with the increasing population, traffic jams are inevitably becoming more common. Again, I could simply say traffic jams are becoming more common, but when I add inevitably, it emphasizes that and you know that this is definitely going to happen. This is certain to happen. And of course, a traffic jam is when you are unable to move because there are cars all around you. A traffic jam, something that we inevitably deal with. Inordinately, inordinately. This means excessively or unusually. For example, he was inordinately excited about his art exhibition. Of course, you expect someone to be excited about their art expedition or any sort of event or presentation. But if you say he was inordinately excited, all of a sudden, I don't think this is a good thing because it means there is too much excitement. The amount of excitement is not appropriate to the situation. So this is how adverbs are so valuable because they can really change the overall meaning of a sentence. He was inordinately excited about his upcoming art exhibition. And maybe you were inordinately upset about making a mistake in English. It's normal to make mistakes, but the amount of upset that you became was too much given the situation. Magnanimously, magnanimously. That's a long word, magnanimously. This means in a generous and forgiving way. For example, my old boss was magnanimously friendly after he found out I started my own company. So I was working for this company, but then I quit, I left, and I started my own company that's going to compete directly with the existing company. So you would expect that my boss, my previous boss, my old boss would be upset, but he was friendly. So I can say magnanimously friendly to show that he was friendly in a forgiving way. He wanted to show that he wasn't upset because I left and started my own company. Ostensibly, ostensibly. This means appearing as one thing when it is really something else. For example, he was ostensibly happy. So I know that he's appearing happy, but there's really something else. So in reality, he isn't happy. I know that because I said ostensibly happy. He was ostensibly happy about the news, but deep down, he was really worried. So he appeared happy, but in reality, he's worried. 
Deep down, that represents the feelings on the inside that we generally don't show to the public. Perpetually, perpetually. This means constantly or continuously over a long period of time. For example, she's perpetually late. This is not a good thing because if you said she's late, well, that simply means she's late right now in this specific situation. But if I add the adverb perpetually, I know it means constantly, which is all the time. It's a reoccurring action or continuously over a long period of time. She's perpetually late. Not a good thing. Precariously. Precariously. This means dangerously or in an unstable way. For example, the hiker walked precariously along the edge of the cliff. So there's an edge of a cliff. That's already a dangerous situation. But if he's walking precariously, it means he's walking in an unstable way. So he's walking like this or a dangerous way. He's extremely close to the edge of the cliff. Superfluously. This is also fun to say superfluously. This means in an unnecessary or excessive manner. So too much, too much beyond what is needed. For example, the report was superfluously long. So reports can be long, but if you say it was superfluously long, it means unnecessarily long. They made one section of the report 10 pages when it could have easily been one page. So hopefully you don't think that this video is superfluously long, excessively long, too long than needed, wanted, or desired. Unanimously, unanimously. This means with complete agreement of all parties involved. So everyone agrees with the same thing. They all agree yes, or they all agree no, or they all agree some other decision. For example, the board members unanimously approved the annual report. This means that every board member said, yes, I approve. They unanimously approved. Vehemently vehemently. This means in a strong and emotional way. For example, she vehemently opposed the idea of relocating to a new city. When you relocate, it means you permanently move from where you live now to a different location. So she opposed this idea. She didn't want to relocate. But if I say she vehemently opposed, you know it was with strong emotion. She feels very strongly that she doesn't want to move, to relocate. She vehemently opposed relocating to a new city. Now that you're more comfortable with these adverbs, let's do the same test again, and I promise you'll do a lot better this time. Here are the questions. Hit pause, take as much time as you need, and when you're ready to see the answers, hit play. Here are the answers. Hit pause, review them, and when you're ready to move on, hit play. You're doing awesome. Share your score from those quizzes and let's review C1 nouns. Question one, she's a good detective. We can trust her. Now I'm only going to give you three seconds to answer. So hit pause if you need more time and then hit play when you're ready. Her inferences. Question two, have you always had towards languages, an inclination. Question three, choosing between studying abroad or staying home close to family is a 
A dilemma. Question four: Learning a new language is a worthwhile endeavor. Question five: The word freedom has positive for most people connotations. Question six: Lockdowns during COVID created a lot of controversy. Question seven. There was a big in the election results disparity. Question eight: J for his English lessons act as a in my language learning a catalyst. Question nine: She gets her friendly from her mother disposition. Question ten: Your is your best quality. Resilience. So was that quiz difficult for you? It probably was, but don't worry because you haven't learned these yet. So now I'm going to teach you each C1 noun in detail, and then you'll do that quiz again, and I promise your score will improve. Disparity. Disparity. This is a noticeable difference or inequality between things, often in terms of quantity, quality, or status. For example, there is a significant disparity in income levels between the rich and poor in this city. Remember grammatically that we're talking about nouns, so pay attention to if the noun requires an article. Or if not, because it's either an exception or it's uncountable. In this case, we have a disparity. We need an article. There's a modifier, a significant disparity. The article is conjugated with the modifier. So if you need a or an, it depends on what directly comes after the article. A significant disparity. Resilience. Resilience. This is a concept, and it's when you can recover quickly from challenges or difficulties. For example, the community's resilience was evident in how quickly they rebuilt after the devastating earthquake. So there was this devastating earthquake that destroyed the homes. But the city's resilience, their ability to recover quickly from challenges or difficulties, allowed them to rebuild the home. And notice that the resilience it belongs to the city, the city's resilience. Dilemma, dilemma. That's fun to say. Dilemma. This is a difficult situation or problem. Where a choice must be made between two options, but they're equally undesirable. So both of the options aren't very good, but you have to make a decision. That's a dilemma. And notice that article, a dilemma. For example, she faced a dilemma between taking a high-paying job she didn't enjoy. Or pursuing her passion for art, but with an uncertain income, so she can take the high-paying job, but she doesn't like it. Or she can pursue art, but there's no money. So that's a dilemma because both of those options have undesirable qualities. Endeavor, endeavor. This is a serious or determined effort to achieve something. Especially something challenging or worthwhile. For example, the team made every endeavor to complete the project ahead of schedule. Notice here, because it's a noun, we sometimes require other grammatical structures to make it complete. And here, you make an endeavor. Otherwise, we could actually use endeavor as a verb. The team endeavored to complete the project, 
but this lesson is teaching you nouns. And in this case, endeavor is also a noun, but you make an endeavor. In this example, it's made every endeavor. So we have our verb make in the past simple. And because every implies there was more than one, we don't have an article. Made every endeavor. But endeavor is a noun that doesn't take a plural form. So the noun is plural, but we don't add an S to it. Inclination. Inclination. This is a natural tendency or preference towards something. His inclination towards music led him to pursue a career as a professional musician. So he has a natural tendency towards music. Or simply, he has a preference. And because of that preference, he's pursuing a career as a musician. His inclination. And notice the inclination belongs to him. His inclination towards music. Catalyst. Catalyst. A catalyst is something that speeds up a significant change or that causes a significant change. For example, the new technology served as a catalyst for the company's rapid expansion into international markets. So in this case, the catalyst is the new technology. And the new technology allowed the company to speed up a significant change, which in this case is expanding into international markets. Or it simply caused that significant change. So either they were in the process of doing this or they started it as a new project. But the new technology was the catalyst. It sped it up or it caused it. Disposition. Disposition. This is a person's inherent qualities of mind and character, or you can think of it as one's temperament or nature. For example, her cheerful disposition made her a joy to be around, even in difficult situations. So here, her disposition, disposition is the noun, and it simply represents her character, her personality. And then we have an adjective, her cheerful disposition. And in that case, it sounds like a positive disposition, but somebody could have a negative disposition. His angry disposition made him a negative person to be around, to completely change the example to the opposite. Connotation. Connotation. This is the emotional or cultural associations that a word has beyond its literal meaning. So let's take the word home. Literally, a home is where you live. That's the literal meaning. But what other connotations are there with the word home? We could say the word home has positive connotations of warmth and security. So that's the emotional characteristics that the word has beyond its literal meaning. That's the connotation. Controversy. Controversy. I'm sure you know this one. This is a prolonged public dispute or debate, often involving opposing views or conflicting opinions. For example, the new government policy sparked a controversy among citizens and politicians alike. Sparked a controversy, here the word spark, simply means created. The controversy only exists because of this new policy. And remember, the controversy is that there are opposing views, conflicting ideas. So there's going to be some sort of debate and is going to be a prolonged debate, a longer than usual debate because it's a controversy. Inference. 
inference. This is a conclusion reached based on evidence and reasoning rather than direct observation. So I could look at something and reach a conclusion. That's direct observation. But maybe I don't have the advantage of looking at something. So I have to use evidence and reasoning to reach that conclusion. That's inference. This is something that detectives do because detectives don't always get to simply look at something to directly observe it. For example, from the clues provided, so the clues, that's the reasoning and the evidence. From the clues provided, the detective made a crucial inference about the suspect's location. So the detective reached a conclusion about the suspect's location, not based on observation, because if you could observe where a suspect is, well then you would know exactly where that person is. But the detective didn't know. He had to use inference, the clues to determine that. Now that you're more comfortable with this vocabulary, let's do the quiz again. Here are the questions. Hit pause, take as much time as you need, and when you're ready to see the answers, hit play. Here are the answers. Hit pause, take as much time as you need to review the answers, and when you're ready to continue, hit play. Amazing job! Share your scores and let's review our final section on C1 adjectives. Question one, Sarah's taste in music meant her favorite genre changed every week. Now I'm only going to give you three seconds to answer, which is not a long time, so hit pause, take as much time as you need, and when you're ready, hit play. Sarah's fickle taste in music. Question two, the smell of freshly baked bread filled the bakery. Pervasive. Question three, the conference featured scientists from around the world. Eminent. Question four, the young boy's nature led him to ask endless questions. Inquisitive. Question five, ChatGPT is becoming in the workplace. Ubiquitous. Question six, from the top of the mountain, they admire the expanse of the valley. Vast. Question seven, the novel's ending left a impact on the reader. A profound impact. Question eight, she had an love of painting. Intrinsic. Question nine, safety is in the construction industry. Paramount. And finally, question 10, the fear of the dark seems to be in many young children. Inherent. So how'd you do with that quiz? Was it easy, difficult? Don't worry if it was difficult because now I'm going to explain each adjective in detail. Let's do that now. Ubiquitous, ubiquitous. This means present, found, or appearing everywhere. For example, smartphones are ubiquitous devices. They're found everywhere. They're found in every home, every office. So we can say smartphones are ubiquitous devices in every home and office. Paramount, paramount. When something is paramount, it means it's more important than anything else. In emergency situations, the safety of the passengers is paramount to the airline crew. So you know the safety of the passengers is important to the airline crew, 
but by including the adjective paramount, you know it's more important than anything else. So the safety of the passengers is more important than protecting the actual airplane. The safety of the passengers is paramount. Vast, vast. This means a very great extent or quantity. So when I hear vast, I know that the extent is very great. For example, the Sahara Desert is a vast expanse of sand dunes. So of course I know there are sand dunes in the desert. I know there are many sand dunes. But when I hear vast, the image I have in my mind all of a sudden changes and I see sand dune after sand dune after sand dune because it's vast. Profound, profound. This means having deep insight or understanding. For example, the professor's lecture on quantum mechanics was profound. By using this adjective, I understand that the person saying this learned a lot of very deep insights or now has a very deep understanding of the topic because it was profound. Pervasive, pervasive. This means spreading widely throughout a group or an area. Remember, we talked about how smartphones are ubiquitous. They appear everywhere. Well, as a result, we can say that social media is a pervasive part of modern society. Because smartphones are ubiquitous and social media, like the J4's English YouTube channel, is now everywhere as well. So it's pervasive. It is spread widely and spread quickly within society. Inherent. Inherent. This means existing in something as a permanent or inseparable quality or element. For example, cats have an inherent ability to land on their feet when they fall. Have you heard that before? That when a cat falls, it always lands on its feet. Well, this is an inherent quality. It's permanent within the cat. It's not separable from the cat. The cat didn't learn how to do this. It's just an inherent quality. Inquisitive. Inquisitive. This means showing a strong curiosity or willingness to learn. For example, my daughter was very inquisitive when we were at the museum. Generally, someone displays being inquisitive by asking a lot of questions. So if you're at the museum with a young child or even an adult, and they ask a lot of questions about what they're seeing, they could also be inquisitive by wanting to read all of the signs and the posters and the information about the objects that they're looking at at the museum. In my opinion, being inquisitive is a very beneficial quality when you're learning, especially when you're learning a language. I love when my students ask questions when they're inquisitive because it shows they're really trying to understand. And when you ask questions and you get those answers, you're able to form those connections in your brain and learn faster as well. So hopefully you are inquisitive when it comes to the English language. Fickle, fickle, that's fun to say, fickle. This means changing frequently, especially in one's loyalties, interests, or affections. For example, the fashion industry is known for its fickle trends. Trends in the fashion industry change very quickly, very frequently. One day, it could be very fashionable to wear a sweater like this, and then next week, they say, that is the ugliest sweater ever and you shouldn't wear it. So they're very fickle about what's trendy 
and what's not trendy. The fashion industry could also be fickle about which designers they promote and support. Maybe one day this person is the designer that everyone's talking about, but then next week nobody's talking about that person and there's a totally new designer. So the fashion industry and many other industries is very fickle. Intrinsic. Intrinsic. This means belonging naturally and therefore it's an essential part. For example, an intrinsic motivation to succeed drives some athletes to push their limits. So they're not motivated by winning a trophy because that's an external motivation. The trophy is outside of them. They're motivated by something within, an intrinsic motivation. And just like I said that being inquisitive is important when you're learning a language, so is having an intrinsic motivation. If you're only motivated to study, to pass the IELTS, well, that's an external motivation. And although it's great to have that motivation, generally, it's not enough. Generally, we also need an intrinsic motivation to really push ourselves and succeed our full potential. Eminent, eminent. This means famous and respected within a specific profession or field. For example, she was awarded a prize for her eminent contributions to the field. The field being the area of her profession. So if she is a quantum mechanic, then that is her field. Quantum mechanics is her field. If she is a physicist, then that is her field, her area of study, interest, or profession. And here it said her eminent contributions. So it's implying that her contributions are famous or respected within that particular field, whether it be quantum mechanics or physics. Now that you're more comfortable with these adjectives, Let's do the same quiz again. Here are the questions. Hit pause, take as much time as you need, and when you're ready to see the answers, hit play. Here are the answers. Take as much time as you need to review them, and when you're ready to continue, hit play. You did it, amazing job. Share your scores from the final section. And if you want me to make more lessons where we review advanced vocabulary, then put more, 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 put more, more, more in the comments and I'll keep making these lessons on advanced vocabulary. And of course, make sure you like this video, share it with your friends and subscribe so you're notified every time I post a new lesson. And you can get this free speaking guide where I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. You can click here to download it or look for the link in the description. Now you learned a lot of vocabulary in this lesson, but why don't we start on improving your listening skills? I have this lesson where you'll test and improve your listening skills. I highly recommend you watch it right now.